Welcome to another coding challenge. This one is on Hacker Rank and it's called Cutting Boards. I didn't realize it until now, but this is actually considered a hard problem. Uh, I'm not sure if it's that hard, but anyway, um, I'll go as usual. I'll go over the problem. Alice gives Bob a board composed of one by one wooden squares and asks him to find the minimum cost of breaking the board back down into its individual one by one squares. Bob must make cuts along its horizontal and vertical lines, reduce the board to squares. Bob makes horizontal and vertical cuts across the entire board. Each cut has a given cost, given by an array, cost y sub i, cost x sub j, for each cut along a row or a column across one board. So the cost of a cut must be multiplied by the number of segments it crosses. And I will visualize that in a, in a little bit. Uh, the cost of cutting the whole board down to one by one squares is the sum of the cost of each successive cut. Can you help Bob find the minimum cost? The number may be large, so make sure to do modulo 10 to the 9 plus 7. Uh, and they give some examples here. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just going to kind of jump into their uh, example here. If I go down this one here, uh, where basically it's a six by four board, and there are five cuts on the side that's length six, and three cuts on the side that's length four. So uh, let me visualize this for a second here. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and actually sorted those costs, because given the problem, it kind of makes sense to do that. So I have here the two one three one four but i've sorted it on the right here one one two three four just to you know again sort that that way and then four two one for the other one so what it's basically saying is if bob makes a cut like this so if bob makes that cut that means it cost him four dollars or whatever the amount is uh because it's four times one this one cut went across one board this entire length basically so I can, I can add that cost here, for example. Then you can imagine that, let's say that he makes another cut, uh, a, ver a horizontal cut. So this time, this has a cost of four, but because we went across one and then two separate boards, um, that is actually a higher cost. This is four times two. So this is just, ho uh, hopefully that clarifies like what it means by the cost versus the, like, way, the way it's cutting. Uh, and so the idea is like we need to cut each block, each square out basically. So we're gonna have to figure out how to make successive cuts that lead to the cheapest cost um, in total. Um, so hopefully that it kind of explains what the problem looks like. So I'll give you some time and uh, try it on your own, and then we'll go over my solution afterwards. See you later. Okay, so we still have this issue of, well, what, what kind of approach should we have here? So if we sort it, that's not really gonna change anything, so why even bother sorting it? So the thing to keep in mind here is, I'll put it on the left here, that the largest, so the largest costs are only going to get larger for each cut. What do I mean by that? Let's say that we go to an extreme where we have all of these uh, horizontal lines cut. That means the next cut that we have to make is a, a vertical cut uh, up and down, right? So that cost is now gonna look like this. And now that's gonna be four times one, two, three, four, five, six boards. Those are six horizontal boards that have been cut now at that point. So that's a four times six. So that's a pretty heavy cost. In fact, it's like the heaviest cost that we have on the vertical side. Um, and so, that's what I mean when I say the largest costs are only going to get larger for each successive cut. So that's why you want to incur those largest costs early on. So when we do this algorithm that we'll be setting up, we're going to take the largest numbers first. So what I would do here is I first sort it and then figure out the largest. So what we'll do is that we're going to sort and then we're going to make the most expensive cuts first. We want to get those expensive costs out of the way so that the cheaper cuts that are like one and two and whatever the number is, are the things that are going to be multiplied by the large number of cuts that we've already made thus far. Um, so let's go through this process once just to kind of show that looks what it looks like. Okay, so when we start this process, we first need to consider what which cost is the largest? Is it the vertical or the horizontal? In this case, the vertical cost and the horizontal are the same. So we kind of just pick one. So I'll just pick the vertical one for now. 
And so that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to calculate the cost on the right here. So we have our running total cost here. It was a cost of four and it went through one large board, the original state being a uh, length of uh, one board, basically. So it's four times one. And now we have to consider the next one. Uh, so this four is no longer in consideration. So I'll just cross that one out. So now we have to consider two versus four, basically. Uh, and so we see here that the horizontal cut is the one to go with. It's, it has the highest cost. We want to get the highest cost out of the way as soon as possible. Um, and so that's why we're going to pick the four here, the horizontal cut. And so this is what that looks like. So let's check out this total cost, because what we did here is the first cut was a, a vertical cut and it went through, through the whole board. So that's four times one. There's nothing there aren't any cuts at that point. But the second time we cut, we have a horizontal cut. But now we're cutting through two boards. Technically, this little one here, that's of like the, the, the very long, thin one here. And there's a cut and then there's a new board that's of like three by uh, three by six here. And that is being cut as well. So that's two cuts of cost four. That's why we have a cost of eight here. So this the second number here. So the four is coming from the max number from the uh, list, basically. But this two or this one is coming from something else. What is that? What does that number represent? Uh, well, it represents the number of vertical or horizontal cuts. Uh, depending on which one you're looking for. So for this first one, even though it's not completely uh, clear initially, but that one actually represents the number of horizontal boards left to cut, basically. Uh, and this two is the number of vertical boards that need to be cut. So that's a number that we need to keep in mind as a variable. So let's keep that in mind right now. Okay, so the number of vertical boards uh, is currently at two, actually. So I'm going to update this. So now we have two vertical boards to cut uh, and, that, and also two horizontal boards to cut. OK, so let's go to the next step. We're going to uh, see this through. I'm going to cross this one out. And now we're basically comparing three and two. OK, so clearly the three wins out. So we're going to go with that one. And because we have a horizontal cut, the thing we're cutting through are vertical boards. So every horizontal cut should be multiplied by the number of vertical boards that there currently are. Uh, and so we see here that we have like three times two. And the thing that we need to update now are our count of the vertical or horizontal boards. Which one do we increment? Well, we just made a horizontal cut. So the horizontal board count has gone up. So that goes up to three now. And we can kind of see that kind of clearly visually that we have like this kind of large uh, section here this these four basically are the four that are left over then there's like a thin one here and another thin one here so there's one two three total that are uh, the horizontal board sections so on the next cut we have two versus two I'm going to I'll just default to doing a vertical cut whenever there's a uh, equality but uh, basically we have a vertical cut and it's going through three horizontal boards and we get six as our at, we're adding that to our total cost and we also need to update our number of vertical boards to cut now because that's gone up by one it goes up to three so of course we're going to go with the two here i've made that horizontal cut you get a six two times three three being the number of vertical boards and now we've made a horizontal cut we increment our horizontal board count up. and so here we have a one versus one so we'll just again default to vertical cut for that situation we have one times four four being the number of horizontal cuts and then we always increment our vertical boards because we made a vertical cut. So here we have now run out of options for the vertical cuts. So we can kind of discard that and just only do horizontal cuts um, from now on. So for the next one, I'm going to set the comparison to zero for the vertical consideration just because we've run out. So it's zero versus one. So we're, of course, going to pick the one. Uh, this one is going to go across all four vertical sections. And so it's one times four. We will increment the horizontal boards to cut to five. Not that it's going to really matter at this point. Um, and then the next one is the, the last one to cut, which is a one versus zero. And so we go through the same process. So if we do our last cut here, that's a one uh, times four, uh, which is the number of vertical board cuts. You'll notice that the four six is the same um, shape as our original, which should Kind of be a nice little check to verify that things actually worked out the way they should. And if we add everything together, we'll get 42, which is the answer for everything, really. Um, and if we go to the example that they give us, that is exactly what we are expecting. So and, and what I will note here, which is interesting, is the 
way that they cut the board in their example does not match with this algorithm. So that's a, that's a weird thing to keep in mind. Like it seems like the person who wrote this either had a very different algorithm in mind or they were being deceptive in how they wanted you to go about it um, because they, they did the cuts in a prop, they did the total number of cuts, everything, the math works out, but you can see like they kind of did it in a weird way. Um, so not sure why they did it that way, but this algorithm does work, I promise. Uh, let's look at the code. Okay, so the first thing to keep in mind is this cost Y and cost X. Um, I, that's a little abstract for me. So in my code, I'm gonna, I'll keep the name just because that's the code that was given, but I wanna be ex explicit as I can. So I'll be using the word horizontal or vertical accordingly. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is we're told to do a modulus at the end um, to keep the number within, keep it within parameters basically. So mod int here is established as 10 to the ninth plus seven. We're told that in the problem. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll do the sorting. I'll just keep this as regular ascending and I'll just kind of pop off the end. Basically, the thing to keep in mind is this is an n log n uh, time complexity and also an m log m because it is technically a different list for that. Uh, the horizontal boards is set and, and vertical boards are set to one. This is the same thing as the vertical boards to cut or the horizontal boards to cut. Um, I'll have my running total cost and then I'll also have a, a number here called cuts left uh, that will be the running logic behind this while loop. Uh, and here I'm having, there are many ways that you can implement this. I've gone with just popping off the back of the uh, given list. Maybe you can use an iterator, like you, you like use like a runner or something, do whatever works for you. This seemed fine for me. Uh, so I have a max horizontal cost and a max vertical cost, which is the like the initial value once I pop from the, the first time. And then I have a while loop here, which is gonna go through the whole, um, all possible cuts, which is just big old N plus M. So here is the logic. So if the max horizontal cost is greater than the vertical cost, then we're gonna make a horizontal cut. Uh, here's a nice little print statement. Uh, I'll leave that in the code just so it's really clear what the cuts are, but that's that was good, useful for debugging. Um, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to add to the total cost, which is the horizontal cost, and then times the vertical boards. Uh, that are left. And then I'm going to increment my horizontal boards by one. Uh, and here I'm going to basically, because I'm doing the popping method, again, you can implement this any other way you want. I'm going to assign the next max cost here at this point uh, for consideration in the next loop. So if there's anything left in that list, I'm going to pop off the end. Otherwise, I'm going to set to zero, just like I did in my example, like this zero here. I didn't, I didn't, I want to have a number to work with, though. That's why I did that. Um, and that's, that's kind of the logic for the horizontal cut. The vertical cut is the exact same thing, just everything's kind of flipped. So that's, that's, that's the else statement here. For the total cost, I'm taking the vertical cost times the horizontal boards, increment vertical boards, and then if there's a list left over, we pop off the end, otherwise set that to zero. Um, and that's basically it. Within my loop, I'm, this is still within my loop here, so I'm still within my while loop uh, at this point. So let me you can still see I'm like within the while loop here. I want to do my modulus here. Um, during this calculation, we might have very large numbers. So I, I want to kind of reduce the overhead as much as possible. So modulus operations are not that expensive. It's pretty easy. So having this during each iteration is actually not that big of a deal. It's just, it's constant time. So it's just math. So that's going to help uh, keep that number kind of within a reason. And then I will uh, decrement the cuts left, uh, which will eventually stop the while loop. And once we're at the end of it, we will have a total cost that has been modded, which is nice. And we just return that and that will be our answer. Uh, let's consider the time complexity here. We had sorting, which was n log n and m log m, as well as going through the whole list, both lists once at uh, kind of like at one time. So that's n plus m, but that's pretty insignificant compared to the log. Uh, and so in the end, our time complexity is big of n log n plus m log n. Let's run some code and see how this works. All right, passes the test. Let's go to submit. Will it pass? I don't know. <laughs> it took a while. Booyah! We did it. All right, good stuff. All right, folks, that was good. I definitely like this problem. I don't. I'm not sure if it's considered a hard. I think it's hard because the some of the math is kind of annoying. The thing that was tripping me up, if anything, was wrapping my head around 
not calculating the cost. So this is something that I had, a, I was challenged with actually. So, and I'll kind of kind of show that a little bit. So what I, what I thought initially was this value here, this should not be the, just the cost was the most, the most cost was the only thing to consider. I thought that was weird because why should it be just the raw number by itself? Only the four, only the, only the number, um, for the cost of the cut instead of the actual total cost, which would be this number here. So that, that's the thing that I thought was, was going to matter the most is like, okay, I need to calculate the cost for each cut potentially. Like this should be four times one and this should be four times one, which one is larger. That's the one I go with. And here it'd be two times, uh, two times one versus four times two. So then I would go with that one. So I thought that I would, I should be calculating the actual cost of the cut. And that would be the number I'd go with. But it turns out that is not the way to do it. And the reasoning is, and I cannot stress this enough, the we want to incur the largest cost as soon as possible. That's the rationale. I'll give you an example of when that doesn't work out. Let's use this example where we have a three by three board and we have the cost, vertical cost of 10 and nine and another uh, horizontal cost of five and five. So I'm gonna go with the, the algorithm that we worked with just now versus using that whole total cost idea, which was the one I thought originally was going to be the one that I was going to go with. Okay. So for my, for the original algorithm, of course we go with 10 and then nine and then five and five. So what does that look like? That's going to be a 10 times one equals 10. So that will give us a grand total of, let's see, that's 49. And that would be the solution, um, in the current algorithm that we just worked with. What if I use the total cost instead to consider what, what we should go with? So in that situation, I would pick the 10 first for sure, because right now that's the, old, that's the largest number. And then I would have to pick between nine times one versus five times two. So I would, I, in this, in that uh, algorithm, I would have to pick the, the five times two because that's just a larger number, right? And then we'll go through that process again. And this time it's a nine times two versus a five times two, nine wins out for sure. And then lastly, the five times three still happens. So what is the total we get using that method? Well, it's gonna be 10 plus 10, that's 20, then 38 plus 15. 30 plus 15 is, so using that method, we would get 53 as our number. And you can see that that is bigger than this. So that's why picking the largest cut cost matters more than the total cost for that cut. What we care about is reducing the cost that we would incur later on. Basically, if we have any uh, large cost now, they're only going to get larger later on. So that's why it's important to just pick the largest number. <laughs> that's basically it. All right, folks, I hope this has been helpful. If this is the kind of content you like, please make sure to like subscribe, do all the good things, and I'll see you next time. Take care.